Oh, it is probably uh, very obvious by now that I am a huge fan of learning. So anytime I come across a, a platform or a community that is helping people to learn or helping them to grow personally, that's that's something that, that I wanna share out as much as I can. So I was really excited whenever Skillshare reached out to me and offered to be a partner on this video. If you're unfamiliar with Skillshare, this is an online learning community with literally thousands of different videos and resources on any number of subjects to help people either learn a new skill or deepen some of the knowledge that they already have. I have a lot of people who have reached out and have wanted me to do some sort of tutorial on video editing. Well, actually that's not necessary because you can go to Skillshare and they have tons of resources for beginners or for people who are advanced uh, in regards to video editing. Now, for me personally, I've been looking for ways to kind of broaden the History Underground's impact on Facebook and Instagram. So I've taken particular interest and have been learning a lot from this class by Gary Vaynerchuk called Context is Key. And the amount of knowledge that I've gained just from this class has been phenomenal. So whether it's music or web design or uh, photography that you're interested in, there is literally something here for everyone. And one thing that I really like is they have uh, all of these different pieces of content broken down into smaller lessons, which makes advancing to your goal that much easier. Now, Skillshare has made a really generous offer to subscribers of this channel. The first 1,000 subscribers who click on the link in the description will get a free trial to the premium membership of Skillshare. So you can go in and uh, start exploring whatever creative endeavor uh, fits you. All right, so anyway, that's a little bit about Skillshare. Uh, as for now, we are going to go hop in the truck and uh, head down the road, got something that I've been pretty excited to share with everybody. Oh, for people who live outside of the United States or, or maybe on the coast, might wonder what people in the Midwest do for fun. Well, most often it has to do with guns. And if you can find one with a grenade launcher attached, well, the fun just multiplies exponentially. So, uh, got a British 303 Enfield here with a World War II grenade launching cup that we're gonna try out today. All right, so it's a, a little bit difficult for me to operate a firearm and uh, run the camera at the same time. So uh, I've got my son helping me out and uh, we're all out of grenades. So instead, we are going to be launching tennis balls today. Now I'm going to explain later how all of this works uh, and, and the mechanics of this uh, British grenade launcher. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna shoot it. All right. All right, and three, two, one. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, that is entirely too much fun. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, we're, we're gonna go uh, to the back of the truck and I'm going to explain a little bit about how this works. So what we are looking at here is a British short mag Lee Enfield. This would have been the standard service rifle of the British infantry during World War II. And of course, what makes this uh, a little bit different from the standard setup is that we have this grenade launching cup attached to the end. So, so again, this is just a, a regular World War II service rifle uh, for, for the British. And the way that it would work is that instead of putting a live round into the chamber, well, you would insert a blank right here, and then your grenade 
would go inside of this grenade launching cup and then whenever you pull the trigger of course the firing pin uh, strikes the primer it ignites the powder inside of the 303 round and uh, the gas expansion is going to cause a lot of pressure to build up in this barrel and eject the grenade out the end of the grenade launching cup and then right here if I can get my son to kind of hold this steady um, this piece right here could be adjusted to where if you wanted the grenade to go the maximum distance you would leave this closed or you could open it up and have room for gas expansion so that you wouldn't have that pressure build up and uh, your grenade wouldn't go as far but anyway <laughs> this thing is all kinds of fun a few more things before we uh, take any any more shots uh, you, you may have seen or I may have even mentioned the wire reinforcement here on this rifle which you wouldn't typically see on one of these Lee Enfields well as I mentioned whenever you pull the trigger and the firing pin strikes the primer and the primer ignites the powder you have a lot of gas buildup here in the barrel well that gas buildup is what is pushing the the bullet out of the barrel well, whenever you are pushing a grenade, that's a lot more mass, so you're going to have a lot more pressure buildup. So they put this wire reinforcement on here to keep the stock from being damaged. Uh, you might have also noticed that whenever I was shooting it, I was turning the rifle upside down. Uh, here, I'll explain why. Um, this right here is called the toe of the stock. And whenever you fire around, of course, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the, the same amount of force that's going out the barrel is also giving you recoil on this end of the stock, which is what causes it to kick up against your shoulder. If I just had it up against the ground like this, well that's a weak part of the stock. All the energy is going past the toe of the stock and you could uh, break it or, or damage it in some way. So. The British soldiers in World War II would turn this thing upside down so that all of the energy was going back here and you didn't damage your stock. But anyway, we've got a, a window here in our barn and uh, we're, we're going to pretend that we have an enemy sniper uh, there in the barn and we're going to see if, if we can uh, launch one of our tennis ball grenades uh, into that window. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and load up our grenade again here. put in another blank all right here we go all right in three two one. Oh gosh yeah that uh, <laughs> that went entirely too far <laughs> okay so whenever the the soldiers uh, were were shooting grenades from uh, this grenade launching cup they would keep it at a 45 degree angle all the time, that way the, there was consistency. And as I mentioned earlier, the range could be adjusted with this little piece right here. So at about halfway, they, they knew uh, with the grenades that they were launching um, what, what spot they could adjust this to and approximately what range it would be. Uh, so I think we're gonna have to go maybe about half the distance and uh, we'll see if that can get us on target. Real quick before we shoot again, I want to show how this grenade launching cup actually attaches to the rifle. So you see there's a, a lug right here that kind of sticks out and then there's a groove really on either end of the grenade launching cup. So you would attach this right here, Let me move my hand to where you can see, and you just twist this down. That's tightening these clamps and then 
there you go. It's secured onto your rifle. So I've actually never tried this before. We're going to uh, back this off maybe mm, between half and three quarters and uh, see what that does. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Oh! Man, it still sent it over the barn. Holy cow. Okay, well, uh, turns out that I'm a terrible grenadier, but it is fun. All right, well, here we go. One final shot in three, two, one. Oh no! Oh, okay. So, I at least hit the barn. I didn't get it in the window, but uh, we are now officially out of ammunition. Well, that is it. So we're gonna go up here and uh, retrieve our tennis balls, but man, what a huge amount of fun it is to get one of these things and to kind of immerse yourself in what the British soldiers of World War II uh, would have been using. This is a piece of equipment that uh, typically doesn't get much attention whenever you're talking about World War II. So anyway, it's uh, fun to use, it's fun to learn about, and uh, <laughs> I can't wait to get some more tennis balls and some more blanks and uh, see if I can improve my skills. Here we go in three, two, one. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs>